So step number one on the book way is to do what? Combine A and C. So A times C in this problem is 10 times negative 14, which is? Negative 140. All right, here we go. This will be fun. Step number two. Yeah, I know, right? She's slipping through to see how long the notes are. They're yeah. long. Yeah, I wanted to see if we were doing how are we doing? Way again. Yeah, oh yeah. Twice we're making good time. time. Oh good. Doing good, okay. All right, what's next? <laughs> We're going to take the factors of negative 140. Do you know what the word factors mean? means the numbers that will multiply to make negative 140. So smart. And what does it need Thank to you. add to? Uh, add to 31. Perfect. Because that's B. That, woohoo! Because Yay. it's B. Very good. <laughs> so factors of AC that add to B. All right, give me two numbers that make negative 40. Well, or negative 140. <laughs> Well, negative 14 and 10. And what is negative 14 plus 10? Negative 4. And that's certainly not negative 31, is it? Well, it could be positive 31. Negative 14 oh. and 10 is negative 4, though, huh? Yeah. Oh, but it does yeah. make positive 31. <laughs> yeah. I misspoke. Okay, <laughs> give me another one. Okay, negative, no, 2 and negative 70. 2 and negative 70, what does that add to? Negative 68. Well, that's not positive 31, is it? No. Go ahead. Why don't you see if you could think of so fast and brilliantly the correct <laughs> answer? Well, the answer might be negative 4 and 35. Uh, what does negative 4 and 35 make? 31. Oh, my goodness. She's a child genius. Very I good. That show. I show. Is that a show? That's a show. I didn't know that. It's on Lifetime. I obviously, obviously, <laughs> I'm not up to date on my music yeah. or my TV. We really have bunny ears at home. We don't have cable. Oh, okay. Okay. Step three. <laughs> What's step three? Um, we are going to take the a. That is right. Ten x squared. Good. The a term. And we are going to subtract four x. And that, that came from right above. Yes, and then we are going to add 35x. That is correct. And that replaced our original 31 because negative 4 and 35 is 31. Keep going. And then we are going to subtract 14. That is correct. And guys, we are just following the same steps we took on the front problem over here. All right, what's step number four? We are going to rewrite the problem. Uh, we did that in step oh, three. No, no. Okay, we're going to. That's that grouping thing. Yeah. So I'm going to look at the first two things together. What goes into 10 and 4? 2. And then they each have an x, right? Yes. So we're going to divide 2x out. What is 10x squared divided by 2x? 5x. That is correct. Now what is negative 4x divided by 2x? Negative 2. That is correct. Now we'll group the second two. What goes into 35 and 14? 7. And just FYI, you guys see that arrow I just drew? That's always, the, that's always what sign you want to factor out. So in this one, we're factoring out a positive 7. And what would we end up with? Uh, times 5x minus 2. And you should know that the parentheses are... What do you notice about the parentheses? Well, they're the same. And if that doesn't happen, guess what? It's wrong. Either you did something wrong or it doesn't factor. And guess what's more likely? You did something wrong. Yeah, not likely, yeah. It's your fault. Maybe not you, but well. whoever chooses to do this. <laughs> All right, how does that, what's our final answer look like? It is 5x minus 2. And? And 2x plus 7. That's right. So the 5x minus 2 is a thing they had to like. You just pulled it out front. And the 2x plus 7 just jumps into the back. Sound good? Yep. So that one wasn't as painful the second time around, right? I kind of like that one a little bit more. All right. <laughs> the more you practice them, the more you're going to like them. You ready to try problem three now? i got to read yes. it so we can actually apply it to a word problem. Of Here's your area. And they're giving your area to you as a polynomial. So as like an equation kind of. What are the possible dimensions? Well, you know that area is what? Area is what times what? Length times width. So all they're doing is they're telling you, we're giving you the area as a whole. We want you to break it down to a length and a width. And in order to do that, we're going to take what we have and factor it. All right, because it says you use, to use the, the factoring. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, are you ready? Let's try guess and check. So here's my 2x. Remember, guess and check starts by breaking things down like this. So what goes into 2x? Oh, 2x squared. What, do we, what? what are the uh, two things that go into 2x Okay, so, well, 2x and 1x. That's right. And <laughs> what are the things that go into 7? Or I should say negative 7. Okay, negative 7 and 1. And 1. Or it could be negative 1 and 7. It could be. It could be either one of those. We just have to kind of play around with our signs. Now, you guys remember how I gave you that hint 
that when there's a plus in the back, the signs are the same. Well, I'm going to give you this hint. When there's a minus in the back, the signs will always be opposite. Oh, man. Look at that. to be confusing. Doesn't now, you ready? Okay. What do you think we need to put, no matter what, in these front two spots? Uh, 2x and 1x. And the reason is, is because... We know that that's all we got. That's all we got. Very good. Now, here's your choice. We can do 7 and 1 or 1 and 7. Your we choice. Can do one and seven. One and seven. Now we'll deal with our signs in a second. Okay. Let's test it. To test it, you do these two. What's one times one? One. One x. Good. And what's these two? Seven. Two x and seven. Fourteen x. Now remember, we do need to get negative thirteen. Yes. Could that work? Um, can we get a negative thirteen from these numbers? We possibly could. If the fourteen was negative. Negative. One order to make the 14 negative. We have to make the 7 negative. That's right. And we need the 1 to be positive, so we need that to be positive. Okay. So a <laughs> quick check. Does that, do these two make positive 1? Yes. Do these two make negative 14? Yep. Does positive 1 and negative 14 <laughs> make negative 13? Yes. And we are done. Yay. So you could do the book way or yay, guess and check. Yay. Yeah, well, there is a yay. <laughs> there you go. You can write yay. Write yay, and then I'll believe you that you did your notes in your own. Yeah, you have right. to check that they wrote yay. I do have to check it. Hey, what's this one? Oh, bottoms up. Are you ready for bottoms up? Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay, first step to bottoms up. Do you remember? It is to <laughs> write A mm -hmm. and C. Okay, so in this problem, A and C are? 120. Or 8 times 15, eight and yes. 15, which is 120. Perfect. Okay. okay, so what? What do we do next? What's next in bottoms up? We are going to take the x squared. That's right. We totally drop that front 8. So instead of writing 8x squared plus 22x, we just write x squared plus 22. 22x. Now, we, ought, we don't write the 8 and we don't write the 15. What's the 15 get replaced with? 120. That's right. And that came from the step above. And now we can apply the factoring that you learned in last night's notes. And that would be... What, you'd write it like this to start with, and I would ask you this question. What multiplies to 120, uh, but adds <laughs> to 22? That is like the bell of knowledge. Yeah, I know. It's like, oh, I understood it. <laughs> <laughs> um, would that be yeah. 10, 10 and 8? And? Or, oh, 10 and 12. 10 and 12, because what's 10 times 12? 120. And what's 10 plus 12? 22. 22. So we got our 120, oh, we got our 22. Got a lot. Woo! Yeah. Light bulb just went on. And oh, these are both <laughs> positive because we needed a positive 120 and we needed a positive 22. Now, the bottoms up does what? We have to put a bottom on there. So what goes underneath our 10? What goes under our 12? A. A. Very good. 8. 8. So the original A value, which was 8, goes underneath of there. Now, we need to reduce those. Can you reduce those for me? That's yes, going to be x I plus 5 fourths. Perfect. And x plus 3 halves. Perfect. I just wrote 6. <laughs> you can reduce that Don't again. judge me. <laughs> Wait, what is it? <laughs> it's 3 halves. I hope okay, so. you're right okay, now. Okay, yay. <laughs> All right. Now, step 5, we're almost there. This is the last step. Go for it. Okay, 4x plus 5. And that the 4 came from the bottom up. Yay! And? And 2x plus 3. And that also came from the bottom up. What do you think? Did you like bottoms up? Yeah. I didn't, I don't think bottoms up is terribly hard. I think I don't think it's that bad. No. Which is your favorite so far? Um, I don't know. It depends on the problem. Depends on the yeah. problem. Yeah, I actually think this one is pretty easy with yeah, this Yeah, for check. that one. I because that I like that one better. And honestly, you can mix and match. It's totally up to you. All right, what do you say we do the next three, maybe on another video? Okay. Perfect. Moving on to the next part of the notes. Um, it's really important that sometimes a, you recognize a problem is going to have a GCF first. If you see that a problem has a GCF, you really have to, you have to always take that GCF out before you begin the problem. As you can see, my guest speaker is no longer with me, so you're just going to have to deal with me on my own. I'm sorry. All right, let's try. We're going to try each way one more time. Book way, um, guess and check, and bottoms up. 
So let's try the book wave one more time. They want us to factor this trinomial. If you take a look at this trinomial, unlike any of the other problems, this time it has a GCF. Please look for the GCF. You should see that the GCF is 3. So be, if before we even begin our problem, we've got to factor out a 3 just like we have done in the past. 18 divided by 3 is 6x squared minus 33 divided by 3 is 11x plus 12 divided by 3 is 4. No longer are we going to look at the trinomial as it was. We looked at the new factored form. Now this GCF, we're just going to hold on to it. It just gets tacked on to the final answer. Let's do this the book way. Step 1, multiply A and C, which would be 6 times 4, which is 24. Now step 2, I need factors of AC, so factors of 24, and they need to add to B. So in this case, we have a new B value and it's negative 11. Do not use negative 33. So real fast off the top of my head, I know 6 and 4 make 24 when you multiply, but that certainly cannot add to negative 11, can it? Alright, so we're probably thinking 8 and 3. Well, 8 and 3 does make 11, but I need a negative 11. Well, that's okay. As long as I make it negative 8 and negative 3, it'll multiply to positive 24, and it will add to negative 11. Step 3 is to rewrite the trinomial. So we're going to do 6x squared, keep the first term. Do not write minus 11x, but instead write minus 8x and minus 3x. Finish with adding the back C term, the 4. Step 4 is to group them and figure out what they have, what their GCF is. So what's common between 6x squared and negative 8x? Hopefully you know that's a 2x. When you divide each of these by 2x, you'll be left with 3x minus 4. Now be very careful in the next set. See this minus sign? You must factor out a negative because that's what this sign is right here. So what goes into 3x and 4? The only thing I can think of is a 1. So when you pull out a negative 1 or when you factor out a negative 1, negative 3x divided by negative 1 is th positive 3, and 4 divided by negative 1 is minus 4. You should now see that what's left in parentheses matches. So step 5 is our finishing step. We write the matching parentheses first, 3x minus 4, and then beside it we write the leftover 2x minus 1. If you ever wanted to check and see if you write, you're right, you just distribute these binomials together and you should get 6x squared minus 11x plus 4. Now remember that 3 was our GCF, so it has to get tacked on to the front because if we were to multiply our binomials together, we would then have to multiply that answer by 3 to get back to the original. So this is the perfect factored form. I can tell you right now in years past, when it comes to the back of the test, I know the back of the test is a whole bunch of factoring, um, sometimes people totally forget to take out just GCF. Long story short, if you had forgot to take that GCF out at the beginning, you could take the GCF out at the end. So if you do recognize like, oh, this parenthesis, I should have had a GCF out of there, you can take it out at the end. If you have questions about that on the homework, please make sure you ask.